Доброго дня, шановні пані Тепанове, українські кризові. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. UCMC resumes its work, and it's work, and we are happy to welcome those who are here in the press room. So our topic now is um, who are the re, uh, re European integration officers in the um, regions. Uh, hello, I'm Rostislav Tamanchuk, head of the Ukrainian um, uh, Institute of International Politics. I would like to say that this is our last event for this year and the topic that we are going to discuss now, this is one of those topics which we have been uh, dealing with uh, during last uh, almost five years and especially intensively during the last year when the idea to create regional European integration offices had appeared. The agency of uh, regional development uh, topic is um, uh, rather sensitive and uh, when the idea to create the European integration offices in the regions uh, appeared, we understood that uh, these uh, centers had to be very creative, very um, practical oriented capable to work with uh, um, medium size businesses, small businesses um, uh, from the very beginning of this process uh, uh, creating the uh, uh, regional development offices uh, uh, in the regions, uh, uh, we provided a lot of assistance. The regional development offices had to uh, coordinate its work with the regional state administrations and regional self-governments. Uh, these are two institutions which usually tend to have uh, rather um, uh, strained relations between them and uh, um uh, uh, our agencies had to uh, create smooth coordination and uh, from the very start of implementation of the association agreement, uh, we um, wondered how to uh, raise public awareness about the uh, association agreement implementation, about uh, uh, transpolation of the uh, European key into understandable messages for local communities is actually the administrative reform, territorial reform, which is now going on in Ukraine, and decentralization reform is uh, more or less uh, um, um, implementation of the um, European approach. Uh, Unfortunately, broad public uh, not always uh, uh, connects the uh, local changes, uh, uh, positive local changes, with the, the uh, broad national policy and broad national reform context. Uh, we believe that the objective of regional uh, offices of European integration in the region is to become drivers uh, of reforms at the oblast levels. With this, I would like to give the floor to our partners from the Konrad Adenauer Foundation in Ukraine. Mm. 
They have been uh, our partners. I'm pleased to invite Mr. Tony Mihal, a research and coordinator of the projects uh, from the uh, uh, Conrad Adenauer Foundation representative office in Kiev. Uh, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm happy to see all of you. Uh, it uh, will be easier for me to speak English. To English. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, I'm very glad to welcome you all on behalf of Konrad Adenauer Stiftung to this event on the strategic outlook of Ukraine's regional offices of European integration. So we at CAS uh, very much welcome this initiative and uh, we very much share the idea that it is not enough to anchor European integration in the capital only. Um, this is why we have taken the, initi the initiative ourselves to open a second office, a second CAS country office in Kharkiv a few years ago. In a country as diverse as Ukraine, what we need is a broad cross-country coalition to build and strengthen political, economic, and interpersonal ties with Europe and to communicate also the short, mid, and long-term benefits of Ukraine's European and democratic path to all its citizens. Um, Deputy Prime Minister for European and Euro-Atlantic Integration, Olga Stefanishina, has already put forward uh, the broad outlook and the broad strategy of the regional offices of European integration. And so today, we want to build and expand on that. Um, so this is why we are particularly happy to co-host today's meeting with our great partners from the Ukrainian Institute for International Politics. So um, a big thanks to UIIP and to all of you for being here with us today. Um, thanks again. I wish us all an interesting discussion. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, we have only one hour for discussion. I think 10 minutes are for enough for uh, welcoming words. So now uh, let us discuss our recommendations uh, and uh, what uh, the Minister of the Regions, the Minister of the Internal Affairs and uh, the agencies of the regional development which participate in the uh, establishment of the um, uh, regional offices of European integration um, will uh, offer their interventions and uh, bring the issues for discussions. With this, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Nadia. And uh, uh, Nadia will present our infographics. This infographics was uh, um, created at the very beginning of the uh, Agency for Regional Development was created. It explains uh, why, uh, what are the agencies for regional development. Uh, Actually, the majority of activities um, designed for the regional development agencies, they actually are from the area of uh, European integration. Uh, yeah, establishing the agencies back in 2017, we had some intentions, we had some visions, and uh, uh, currently we see that uh, those agencies are working very differently. Some of them are very proactive, some of them are um, more passive, some of them are almost inexistent because uh, the formation was not finished. Nevertheless, we decided that uh, uh, establishing the uh, Euro integration offices in the regions may stimulate the um, uh, regions, some oblasts, uh, 
to steer up this work uh, aimed at regional development. So what are the major objectives of the regional agent? Is uh, uh, this uh, economic development of the region's uh, uh, attraction and uh, creating incentives for investments in the region, creation of new jobs, uh, uh, promotion of uh, uh, education and upgrading of staff, uh, um, look for uh, search for investors and support of investors in the uh, first steps, uh, uh, support of innovative entrepreneurship and startups here. They have to cooperate with universities, businesses in their regions. And what is last but not least is support and development of SMEs uh, in the region and also promotion of SMEs beyond the borders of the region. Oh, are the major objectives of the uh, agencies, formation of the comprehensive vision for the oblast development, increasing competitiveness of the region, uh, development of smart specialization, Will you please bring back my presentation? Promotion of the uh, e image of the region, branding and promotion of the uh, region abroad, uh, um, increasing competitiveness of SMEs, uh, uh, supporting of innovative development and uh, also communication with other regions to build up the network structure for regional development uh, uh, all around Ukraine. When my colleagues and I started to make research, uh, we found out uh, those challenges uh, which uh, may face the uh, regional uh, European integrational offices. First of all, they may um, overlap with the uh, local uh, uh, local e industrial and uh, uh, trade associations or chambers, uh, they might be um, uh, her, uh, conflict or overlapping with the Horizon 2020 program. There might be additional business promotion progress uh, programs in the region. So here we have to understand clearly uh, that uh, the um, mm, regional offices of Europe for European integration do not overlap with the activities of other programs and uh, agencies working in the regions. Besides that, uh, uh, the objective of Euro integration offices is to communicate reform uh, communicate reforms at the territory to explain the linear uh, sectoral uh, reforms uh, to attract investments uh, but actually we have to decide whether we ha we want that uh, uh, expert uh, uh, promotion of local businesses uh, should be one of the major tasks for the European integration uh, offices. When we started our analysis, we tried to understand how much uh, uh, regional development office has to be strong, whether we are able to transform it uh, into the region, uh, European integration regional office, or we have to uh, reestablish it and strengthen.
and uh, we try to understand uh, whether your integration offices could be uh, strong enough if we create them in the regions from scratch. Whether this, uh, um, we need uh, to understand uh, clearly. Our pilot regions, perhaps, will clarify this issue for us and uh, will allow us to, un to bring this clarity. Also, for the year 2021, we are unable to find money in the state budget for these agencies. Also, the difficulty of coordination uh, at the national level for these offices. When we look at the Herson Office of European Integration, we clearly see that that uh, among the um, budget managers uh, we do not see now the Ministry of Economy, but uh, we uh, do see uh, we have to see such a ministry because the European integration uh, offices should be responsible for um, promotion of SMEs, export and import uh, development. What do, how do we see the objective? Uh, the European Integration Offices is uh, to promote uh, the European integration vector in Ukraine, communication of reform process and the promotion of social economic development of the regions. Uh, that is support of SMEs, support of investments, uh, uh, social economic development of the regions. Actually, this is the same what the uh, re regional uh, development offices are doing. So the regional development offices have to be interested with the function of popular, popularization. Actually, that is why we decided to establish the European Integration Offices on the basis of the Regional Development Offices for this reason that uh, actually the regional development offices have everything except this popularization of uh, uh, European integration reforms. Um, uh, uh, at the same time, some regions in Zaporizhia, in uh, Dnipropetrovsk region, uh, they started to request that they want to provide assistance to exporters, etc. Uh, when we discuss about investments uh, c coming from Europe, um, we see that this is a slightly new function comparatively to the regional development office. Well, but these additional new functions are not numerous. Uh, so uh, the essence of our discussion is uh, whether to create uh, the European integration offices from scratch or to add just one communication department to the regional development offices uh, uh, with this one component uh, of European integration promotion. When we look at the tasks uh, or objectives, uh, we uh, see the clear recommendation to communicate with other programs, which the Oblast has, to strengthen work and to have a clear 
action plan uh, with uh, clear uh, implementation indicators. That is, local communities have to understand clearly where to apply for additional projects, uh, um, programs, etc. You lead the program for many years, has been working with the regions, and uh, we should prevent overlapping with their work. Not all uh, communities are involved into the ULEAD projects, and here we can uh, step in. Uh, then I mentioned the um, clear implementation indicators. There will be a big deal to understand uh, what the indicators should be, what we will have at the end of 2021. Having no funding, additional funding from the state budget this year, we have to choose the, those activities and those things which could be done uh, with, without uh, um, national budget. Uh, then funding from different uh, sources. We have uh, 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 the office can get uh, funding from different uh, sources, uh, from uh, business, from uh, different international uh, stakeholders, from founders. Uh, uh, then. There might be communal money um, allocated for the office uh, from local community. So depending on the status, the office will be able to uh, raise money for its operations. The office has uh, to have a high level of trust among founders and stakeholders. At the regional office, the uh, representatives of the office should be those people who are trusted by the partners, by uh, businesses, by the officials. That is to build up trust with local level. The office has to be recognizable. Here we, we mean effective communication with different instruments, social networks, uh, branding of its products, uh, which now could be done easily. Social networks are quite widely used uh, due to lockdown, and you can make uh, good announcements about many events. The office should be mobile, creative, and uh, um, prompt and make decisions promptly. Here, much will depend whether the entire office works as a team and to whom it is subordinated, whether it is subordinated to the European Integration Office at the central level or not. The high mobility would allow this office to become very proactive in the involvement of investors in, in support of SMEs. It has to uh, be result-oriented, and uh, the first uh, fruits have to be gained within a year and uh, could be, it should be measurable. Good contact with the national and regional levels of authorities. This is uh, closely related to the, uh, the level of trust. If you look at the 
your integration offices as at a network, then we understand that the Euro integration office at the national level can communicate uh, with the oblast to uh, but to balance properly the uh, euro integration process all around ukraine we all understand that our oblasts in ukraine differ in terms of uh, uh, informational component about european integration and this should be well balanced if we are speaking about the structure would like to to also deal with the offices of uh, the regional development, what it may provide. And the structure depends on this, the structure of the agency of the regional development of the Euro integration office. There's marketing, development of PR campaigns, uh, promotion of the regions, uh, marketing, sociological surveys, analytical research, analytics for promotion of the region, investment, attractiveness and accessibility of the region, clear analysis of the strategy of and creation of additional elements of financing additional instruments to attract investment, organizational and legal services clear support of investors, support of SMEs, and the support of investors, uh, and also educational services, information services, information about European Union, about reforms that are ongoing in the framework of the association agreement and the European um, region, uh, European um, movement in the regions, and also clear distribution in the structure of uh, Euro integration office. Also, we are speaking about financing. The main aspects I would like to focus on when we are speaking about financing. First, we understand that the success of pilot projects in 2022 is important. We may clearly see the indicators and best practices we will get in 2022, and this will allow to have better financing and uh, to have funds in the budget to finance the agency in 2022. Also, uh, it is possible to use the new status to increase financing in the framework of the oblast budgets. Here we are speaking about uh, the level of founders, if this is oblast council, oblast state administrations, they will be able to help if they see the necessity of the offices, they understand added value of these offices, and they should envisage this money in their budgets. Also, in 2021, we should focus on the results that we get by small steps we get them, and then um, we will clearly plan and use these results in order to increase the efficiency. Also, it is really important to have a dialogue with EU programs and uh, delegations, and uh, also to have a dialogue with the European Commission to synchronize dif different components uh, in the regions in order to support uh, financially European Integration Office in the regions about European experience, what uh, these agencies do in the European countries. This is creation of opportunities for employment, improvement of qualification, 
overcoming economic inequality of the territories, development of the programs uh, with the involvement of resources for uh, developing territories. This is about equality and information support for reforms in Ukraine. This is provision of consultation services for citizens, that means educational institutions, local and regional self-government, formation of investment passports, and promotion of positive image of the regions abroad and at the level of different territories. Also, educational events, trainings, information events, transborder and uh, interregional projects, development and monitoring of uh, strategies of regional and local development, and smart specializations of uh, the regions and consulting and uh, company of communities in the development of the projects. If we are speaking about sources of financing for the agency, they are diversified. There's a state budget, EU program, and uh, the resources of international organizations. Uh, these are fees of co for Rome co-founders, also private sector, local self-government, here we should understand the, the status of the agency and also monetary contributions uh, and charity contributions and also municipalities and local self-government bodies may support this agency of regional development. So this is all from me. We have Facebook broadcasting now and uh, we will look whether we have uh, questions from participants. We only have 25 minutes. Maybe we'll give the floor to our colleagues from the Ministry of the Regional Development, uh, Viktor Podorozhny, General Director of Development and European Integration. Viktor Podorozhny. Are you with us now? Alla Pavlyuk, head of the group of the regional policy and the cooperation with donors. Do we have her here? Unfortunately, they have a meeting now. Do you have a signal? Sergei Barvitsky, state expert on support of regional uh, development and uh, regional policy and uh, donor support. Do you hear me? Siri Barovitsky. Unfortunately, we have the meeting now. Uh, several words from you, please. The matter is that on the 15th of October in Kherson and Dnipro, first offices uh, of your integration were open. Uh, now further work is ongoing, and the development of draft document of the Cabinet of Ministers that envisage the adoption of provision concerning creation of the office and also plan of actions improvement for 2021. Now work is an ongoing. We hope that in the nearest future, this document will be considered by the government and approved by the government. Do I understand correctly that this will be a new structure? It won't be within the agency of the regional development. The office, uh, your integration office, may be created based on the agency of uh, um, uh, regional development. But this is, will be separate legal structure, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sergey, if you have some more proposals, please join us. Alla and Viktor from the ministry, uh, maybe they will have some contribution. So I saw Marko Markovich from Dnipropetrovsk Oblast. He is the director of the office. So, Marko, please tell us what are your plans? How do you see this process? I know that you have an optimistic view. 
you actively participate in this process. We are really glad that uh, the family of um, the offices uh, increase due to such initiatives like yours in uh, Dnipropetrovsk Oblast. What are your plans for 2021? What are the main challenges for you? Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this roundtable. About the plans, before speaking about the plans, I would like to thank for your presentation. Also, we uh, would ask you to share this presentation with us because you have uh, information that coincides with our information and uh, uh, what we also uh, the plans that, and what we should do further. Uh, our plans coincide. We would like to focus uh, and voice our main areas, and you've mentioned them in your presentation. We have the first and the main is the support for SMEs by cons providing them with consultation. Um, consultations, um, cooperation with different stakeholders at the regional and national levels, involvement of experts, creation of investment passports, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, there is an idea to create a single document from the representatives of businessmen of Oblast in order to introduce some changes to the association agreement to have the policy of a uh, single front. We started this work already. Also, one of the directions of our work is the support of the participants of ATO, uh, psychological rehabilitation, and the improvement of qualification for our psychologists in accordance with NATO standards. At office, uh, your integration office uh, is our name, in, and we were guided by our name. And uh, um, uh, we also have the component of your integration, uh, your Atlantic integration. And for the start, we believe we should deal with this issue. Because, first of all, we should remember that people who defended this country, they are in the East. They um, defend not only our values, they de uh, defend uh, all comprehensively, they defend uh, European values. And um, uh, culture and education, uh, this is also a field where we have a lot of uh, work to do. And there is cooperation at the international level. We should promote our talents. We should hold trainings. One of the priorities for us also is the work with ATCs. Because in the framework of decentralization reform, this is one of our most successful reforms. We believe that this is really important to involve best practices from the West and to provide information and consultation services, trainings, trainings on financial literacy, legal literacy, also management and other issues, because money, we have more money at the local level, but people should know how to use this money in order to provide for communities to develop infrastructure. What else? Also, it is important to develop green energy in the Dnipropetrovsk Oblast to create an energy cluster to promote ideas and projects on green hydrogen. There are people on our team who deal with this area. So our policies, our ideas coincide with yours, and our plans co also coincide. Also, acute issue is the issue of financing, and this was repeatedly mentioned in your presentation. 
I may share the mechanisms we have to support functioning of the Euro Integration Office. This is about salaries and functioning of office as it is. The office is created on the basis of Office of the Regional Development. This is a new structure, but based on uh, Regional Development Office, we have supervisory board. I was uh, appointed the director and uh, the Department of the um, Foreign Policy in the framework of the new five-year budget program. There is a separate program for support. Port, um, of uh, your integration office for 2021. Uh, this is yearly planning. And this, this program should be approved at the, low, uh, at the level of Oblast Council. So quality communication is needed in order to have quality cooperation between the stakeholders and Oblast administration and in the framework of the program, our office should be provided with salaries and uh, the office should get proper maintenance in order to focus on the projects you've mentioned. If you have questions, please, you may ask. Thank you very much. Are you Marco or Marco? Maybe Marco? Marco. Marco will be correct. But I got accustomed that many people call me Marco. Maybe there will be some questions from other colleagues. Taras Baranetsky, Agency of the Lviv Oblast. Taras, are you with us? Katerina Savchok, Khmelnytska Oblast. Taras. It's a pleasure to see you. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Please, several words from you. What do you think about competition? Do you feel some pressure? Because you are not your integration office, you uh, are still the agency of regional development. Good afternoon. Look, this issue about the Euro Integration Office is, uh, issues, uh, question is still open. Several weeks ago, we sent a letter to Olga Stefanishina uh, that uh, this office should be created, but this issue is still open. Uh, the decision is not taken. If we are speaking about the agency of the regional development and uh, Lviv uh, Oblast, it is created uh, in accordance with the recommendations. We have only one founder. This is Lviv uh, City Administration. But we, we are trying to do everything possible in order to correct the situation. And also, if possible, to uh, create an office, your integration office, as Marco mentioned, to uh, have proper salaries. I do not see competition. I believe many functions that should be uh, done by European office. We believe that uh, it, uh, these functions coincide with uh, our uh, functions. That's why I don't think there is a problem uh, here. Thank you, Taras. And we have Katerina Savchuk, uh, Director of uh, this Office from Khmelnytsk Oblast. And I know that Khmelnytsk Oblast is uh, taking part in this uh, in this pilot project uh, in the Prepetrov and Kherson Oblast. They created these offices in Poltava Oblast and Khmelnytska Oblast. They are now at the preliminary stage. What are your plans, uh, Katerina? What are your plans for the next year in the framework of the, uh, the Euro Integration Office? What do you plan? Good afternoon. Thank you very much for raising this important discussion because these uh, pilot projects or these obl uh, pilot oblasts, they should be able to um, uh, they should be able to get proper support. And I addressed for consultations to you in order to have pl proper planning for the next year. Um, 
And for us, uh, it is difficult to reorganize. We are active agency. We were created in accordance with legislation. We have a lot of experience in the development of the projects. We wrote this year more than 19 projects. 14 of them are at the stage of consideration. And uh, when we know the results, part of them will be successful, of course, and uh, this will complicate. Uh, we have one grant agreement. The process of transformation for us is more difficult compared with uh, Dmitro, uh, the Dnipro and Kherson. And we have an optimistic outlook. And Office of Euro Integration, this is a stimulus for development of the oblast compared with our neighbors in Khmelnytska oblast. We do not have many programs of technical help that uh, work in the regions. We have you lead for, uh, with Europe that actively support bodies of local power. Uh, to increase their capabilities, but the efforts of one office is not enough. And here, in partnership, we are trying to develop the region, to develop those projects we want to develop. And um, uh, our efforts uh, alone are not enough. We should broaden our team and broaden partnership. Um, your integration office is a good opportunity for us to develop the partnership. Next year, we plan to focus Uh, on sharing best practices and experience between the regions and um, the um, European countries and uh, the main topics, uh, management of domestic wastes, green projects. Milnichina is considered a um, green heart of Ukraine, and these environmental initiatives uh, um, are important and the uh, social and the economic and cultural issues and their connection with the environment is really important. We also will work in the education sector. We have grant agreement. We have one of the projects that is directed at improvement of uh, implementation of sustainable development goals and uh, in development of education sector. And in, on Wednesday, we'll have communication with the uh, Mine Academy of Sciences in order to um, develop our initiatives with them and to develop education. And I will open a secret concerning um, uh, this uh, sector. We want to develop educational tourism. This is uh, also the topic of energy efficiency in uh, healthcare institutions. This is a painful topic. And also one of the top topics, support of SMEs and access to innovative solutions in order to transform enterprises and to make them more resource efficient and more innovative. Also, we will continue together with you, and we thank you for the consultant we have now uh, from Sofia. And we had the meeting last week. We discussed how to develop and deepen this area, the development of smart specializations. This is a new experience for us. Uh, skills and knowledge are lacking. And we need to involve a broad circle of partners. That's why we really need support on this. Second uh, sector that is really important for us, this is strengthening of participation of the region in different European programs and initiatives. And here we also have uh, a lot of uh, uh, experience. We are trying to study Horizon 2020. We are trying to participate in those programs in order to get experience and uh, to work in this to uh, on this topic. In uh, Oblast, we do not have uh, contact points uh, Horizon 2020. We address neighboring uh, Oblasts. Uh, and, um, uh, we get prepared to, uh, to open the European Integration Office, and we have clear support at the level of Oblast Council. Uh, it was elected recently, and at the level of uh, Oblast State Administration, 
and uh, it takes some time to organize everything properly. And uh, for us, partnership is really important in different areas. And uh, the Euro Integration Office, uh, we consider as a big opportunity. Of course, we would like to get support from the um, uh, governmental office and other structures concerning communication of reforms for us. We. We need support in this. Uh, we need to have uh, uh, support in promoting um, uh, proper messages. We need uh, proper communication with business, with uh, the public, with local self-government. and. Uh, um, would like to get additional resources because our oblast it needs additional resources of course thank you very much Katerina we thank our colleagues we have uh, some time if you have questions please one moment please we do not have uh, questions at the moment we have 10 minutes more Thank you, Katerina. Do we have questions from the charter from broadcasting? So I would like to add several comments. When we carried out this research, they, there were many challenges that we forecast and we understood. As an organization, we really were concerned that uh, these uh, um, offices and agencies were properly established in Ukraine, and the integration offices, um, they uh, will uh, be created not only on paper. This wave of Euro, the Euro integration offices uh, should be um, implemented in the regions, and not everyone properly understand the functions of these offices. And we understand that, for example, oblasts need to call them the European Integration Office. For us, this is also not bad. This doesn't resolve the prob problem, but maybe this is the way for the region to increase the number of oblasts that have these instruments that help them uh, to uh, develop. That's why we were glad to hear about the initiative in Kherson Oblast and in Dnipropetrovsk Oblast uh, and uh, in Poltava Oblast. These are the regions. There were powerful structures and agencies of the regional development. They had their budgets, their instruments that were influential in the regions. Another component I would like to add, this is political component of the Euro Integration Office. We didn't mention this before, but it is not less important. We should understand it. We understand that if we analyze the results of different elections, the results of sociological surveys, we understand that there are the regions that have more support and participation, and others have less in this process. That's why recommendation from us is that these offices on your integration, they are important also for the regions that has less have less support concerning integration to the European Union in order to try to find some instruments how to explain to the public, to people about uh, the changes, that they are connected with the approximation of Ukraine to the European Union. So these are reforms that are not just from nowhere. They are connected to the association agreement. They are connected with understanding of the development of the country. And uh, this communication component should be done in a proper way. So if we are speaking about further broadening of the European integration offices, we should focus on the regions that demand additional communication, including Odessa Oblast, Mykolaiv Oblast, Zaporizhia Oblast, Sumy Oblast, Kharkiv Oblast. In this way, we should understand whether we uh, put something uh, except the name. We cannot just call the office the office of Euro integration. We should clearly understand where money comes from. 
plan of actions, plan of events, indicators, and what we would like to get in the result. Because uh, if we just call office the Office of Euro Integration and then nothing is done, and uh, those offices would just survive trying to search for resources, someone will deal with green, deal with project management, someone will try to help communities or to bring some investors. This won't provide a result that will be a good basis for the uh, agency and uh, this is uh, this won't be uh, proper so uh, we believe that the mo most important here is proper financing it's not easy to find the money in the budget we should understand that there are tasks that are important for the regional stakeholders, but the Euro integration office, uh, um, they uh, need some communication at national level. Uh, they should communicate reforms, uh, proper policies that are being formed and that are set at the central level. We should understand that there should be money at the state level. It's not easy to uh, get them, and uh, we, uh, it's not easy to um, plan this money for the next year. But for oblasts that now create the Euro Integration Office, for them it will be difficult because resources are lacking. And uh, we do not know where the, we will have these resources. And oblast uh, councils that will vote for the budget, we do not know whether they will allocate more money. But I'm convinced that here we should do everything possible, everything that we can. But next year will be the pilot year for these offices. And in summer, we will uh, start an expert discussion with the Ministry of Finances, with other profile ministries that deal with uh, some components of Euro integration in order to try to envisage some money for 2022. Because without this, so we won't be able to speak about communication of national reform, national policies. And uh, it's difficult to, to um, have only regional resources. And uh, also the last component about the resources is the programs of European Union. And uh, we thank you, Nadia, that you described that uh, European um, Union uh, projects uh, we have uh, many institutions dealing with several experts, uh, investors, experts, education, uh, uh, Horizon 2020, Creative Europe. Each you lead. Each program has its own office, uh, its own information point. Its own contact point in the region. So we have to clarify what the role of the European Integration Office in the region should be. Either it should be just an umbrella or it will take upon itself the function of all those projects uh, from uh, some projects, from some maybe EU country representatives, I do not know. So when in 2021, we will be able to establish a dialogue with different programs and different ministries who are beneficiaries of each program and uh, start discussions uh, uh, that uh, this Euro Integration Office may participate in communication uh, elements of those programs, then later on we will be able to uh, organize this work properly. We have a comment from Dnipropetrovsk region. First of all, I would like to point out that you are absolutely right that the issue of funding is extremely important for us. Uh, we should clearly understand that from the 
moment when the Eure Integration Office is established in the oblast, in any oblast actually, this oblast becomes a part of the process. And uh, the quality of communication which you mentioned is extremely important. The, because the level of stakeholders verifies and differs from stakeholders to stakeholder. Actually, here you uh, go from the national level, not only to the oblast level, but to the very local level. And uh, the challenges for the local level are extremely uh, big, uh, beginning with the political instability and ending with the uh, varying impact of local elites uh, in many regions. So uh, we um, we have received very positive and a strong message from Vice Prime Minister of European Integration, but we have to gain this support at all the levels. If today we have representatives from all those regions who plan to open uh, regional Euro integration offices, uh, they should build, start building up uh, communication. You correctly mentioned that this will be not uh, an easy process. Uh, in our preliminary discussions with the you lead with your project, we uh, strongly uh, mentioned that we are not, we have no intention to interfere in the um, uh, sphere and area of the elite program. Uh, but we found out that uh, the need and demand for the elite uh, products uh, like trainings, uh, round tables, uh, etc., uh, is drastic. And uh, what is needed, this is efficient communication. And uh, uh, this efficient communication may be uh, effectively coordinated from Kiev. Um. Uh, we need we need the beacons. We need uh, um, uh, orientation for our communication. The, and do it for us, it's very important to get this support from Kiev in order to be able to build up coalitions and quality communications at the local and the regional level to build up relations with regional elites and to involve SMEs. Mm. Uh, and to involve uh, even funding uh, uh, into implementation of uh, basic projects, infrastructural projects, etc. Thank you, Marco. And two more comments. <laughs> You mentioned about national level. First, uh, uh, commu communication with the ministries. The Ministry of Regional Development is entrusted with uh, this work. The ministry that is going to work with you has to have this uh, um, capacity. Uh, it, when we discuss that the Ministry of Regional Development uh, has to provide you with some orientation, uh, they, as a ministry, should understand clearly this role and approach uh, to other ministries and discuss with those line ministries those aspects which 
they will then bring to you. I mean Ministry of Education, Ministry of Trade, the Investments Involvement, the Secretariat of the Cabinet of Ministers, Green Deal, uh, Energy Efficiency, New Roadmap. These are separate ministries uh, um, responsible for all those aspects. It won't be that easy to bring all those ministries and coordinate their uh, work. So the Ministry of Regional Development has to establish this communication and then come back to you and communicate this uh, unified position to you. And uh, my last comment. Uh, 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 either you wish to act uh, uh, independently or whether you will base your work on the uh, your integration plan. Uh, you cannot just decide that you would deal with the uh, waste uh, treatment uh, uh, because it is important for us. If this is not separately stated in the um, in some documents, uh, uh, so you have to stack with the general philosophy, general structure, how the European integration should look like. I may uh, use any instruments, round tables, visits, etc. But in your work plan, you should clearly understand in which aspects you uh, join the Euro integration process. Both models, which I described, they are equally valuable. Uh, and you simply have to choose. So either there is a centralized division that they that your regional offices of European integration, or alternatively, you offer your own ways how uh, the central government may cooperate with the region uh, in the area of your integration more efficiently. But here we come back to finance. Of course, it will not be that easy. Nevertheless, we start this path. And uh, we are happy that we are now in three new regions in the list. Nadia, maybe you will add. I have three additional comments. First of all, I would like to thank to the Euro integration offices. We had this discussion whether the tasks uh, might be uh, uh, more or less different. Either all the regions have to be uniform in their tasks, or uh, in some region there should be some specific tasks that are specific for each region. And Mark very clearly mentioned that uh, uh, the tasks of psychologists uh, um, this is a specificity of your oblast. Khmelnytska region uh, mentioned its environmental projects and uh, green energy. So on the one hand, the Euro integration offices have uh, specific tasks uh, set by the central office. On the other hand, they have uh, uh, their specific tasks. Very soon, we will disseminate the document. 
um, with our recommendations to the regional development uh, agencies. And now, Tony, will you please add a couple of words? The time I will limit myself a little bit and say uh, thank you very much for to all participants who, who joined us uh, and to the UIIP for the co-organization. And um, we're looking forward to continuing the discussion on the basis of the recommendations and further on in 2021. Thank you all very much. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you, Tony. So we will not leave you alone. We will come back to you in late spring. and try to assess where we are and what we want to do. Bye-bye.